If we first consider the origins of life on Earth, it all started with one single common ancestor, which obviously meant there was very, very low biodiversity. Fast forward to the present day and think about all of the species that we've got on Earth today, there are millions upon millions of different species, so many that we actually don't know how many there are. But we can say for sure that there is a very, very high biodiversity in global terms. This change from low biodiversity to high biodiversity came about through a process known as evolution. Evolution came about as a consequence of something called natural selection. And there's a mechanism through which this happens. The first thing to note is that there is variation within any population. There is a variation which exists as a result of random mutations. Easy examples are things like different eye colour and skin colour amongst humans. We're not all absolutely identical. Similarly, in the animal kingdom, maybe some lions have got slightly thicker leg muscles than others. Maybe some giraffes have got slightly longer necks than others. It's important to recognise that this process is completely random. Next, let's consider the daily struggle for survival that constantly goes on. There are resources such as food and space and water which are limited. There are predators which need to be avoided. A lion, for example, that has thicker leg muscles might find it easier to catch prey. So in the struggle for survival, it might be slightly better adapted. Similarly, a giraffe with a longer neck may find it slightly easier to access food because it might be able to get food that's higher up in the canopy. This is described as fitness. We can say that some organisms have got a greater fitness than others. Obviously, fitter organisms are going to be more successful in the environment. The daily struggle for survival is going to be slightly easier for them. And this means that they are more likely to survive and produce offspring. Lastly, inheritance. The offspring of the fitter individuals may inherit those useful characteristics. If this process goes on and on and on over many, many, many generations, then we could say that the population will evolve, basically meaning that it will change to have more of a certain characteristic. So over hundreds and thousands of generations, an organism might adapt to have a longer neck to be able to reach food higher in the canopy. There are lots of environmental changes that happen, and if environmental change does occur, then we could say that a new selection pressure is applied. The result of this would be that natural selection takes a new direction. Let's look at an example. This rodent here is adapted to its environment, and it's got a brown colour because it's probably quite well camouflaged against the earthy colours around. But a cooling climate brings snow. As a consequence of completely random variations, there might be a very, very, very small number of the population that have got white fur. Remember that it hasn't developed white fur in response to the snow. It's just completely by chance that there might be some that have got this fur colour. However, because of the new selection pressure, we might find that this this rarity, this one with the white coloured fur, is better camouflaged. Through evolution we might find that the population as a whole adapts and then we end up with a majority of these organisms becoming white colored. Sometimes some populations might become separated so for example a big mountain range forms by geological activity so we've got one population covering an area and that population suddenly gets split in half. Isolation could result in speciation and speciation is the gradual change in species over time as each population can no longer interbreed with each other. And they might be exposed to different environments. So the mountain range has formed and now we've got population A is split in two. They might eventually change into populations B and C, two completely separate populations. And that's because maybe the climate is slightly different. Maybe one has got to be adapted to having snow cover on the ground or something like that. So natural selection contributes to the evolution of biodiversity over time. Let's think about how you could get tested on this in exams. Explain how mechanisms of evolution have resulted in increased biodiversity. Highlight the command term first off. Notice that this is an explain question, so we have to give reasons or causes. 
Populations all have variation due to mutations. Natural selection of certain traits occurs in populations, and the fittest organisms are more likely to survive and pass on their genes to the next generations. Here we've sort of outlined the principle of natural selection. So now we've got to connect this to the idea of biodiversity. How does this cause increases in biodiversity? Well, speciation occurs due to isolation of populations. And now let's give some details of that. When populations are isolated, they evolve differently, as they may be exposed to different selection pressures. Separated populations eventually become so different that we can consider them to be different species. And therefore, if we've got a greater number of species, the diversity has increased overall. Notice that we're specifically referring to species diversity here. 